Chapter 4. Once again Jesus began teaching by the lake shore. There was such a large crowd along the shore that he got into a boat and sat down and spoke from there. He began to teach the people by telling many stories, such as this one. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seed. As he scattered it across his field, some seed fell on a footpath, and the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The plant sprang up quickly, but it soon wilted beneath the hot sun and died because the roots had no nourishment in the shallow soil. Other seed fell among thorns that shot up and choked out the tender blades so that it produced no grain. Still, other seed fell on fertile soil and produced a crop that was thirty, sixty, and even a hundred times as much as had been planted. Then he said, Anyone who is willing to hear should listen and understand. Later, when Jesus was alone with the twelve disciples and with the others who were gathered around, they asked him, What do your stories mean? He replied, You are permitted to understand the secret about the kingdom of God, but I am using these stories to conceal everything about it from outsiders, so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. They see what I do, but they don't perceive its meaning. They hear my words, but they don't understand, so they will not turn from their sins and be forgiven. But if you can't understand this story, how will you understand all the others I am going to tell? The farmer I talked about is the one who brings God's message to others. The seed that fell on the hard path represents those who hear the message, but then Satan comes at once and takes it away from them. The rocky soil represents those who hear the message and receive it with joy. But like young plants in such soil, their roots don't go very deep. At first they get along fine, but they wilt as soon as they have problems or are persecuted because they believe the word. The thorny ground represents those who hear and accept the good news, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the cares of this life, the lure of wealth, and the desire for nice things, so no crop is produced. But the good soil represents those who hear and accept God's message, and produce a huge harvest, thirty, sixty, or even a hundred times as much as had been planted. Then Jesus asked them, Would anyone light a lamp and then put it under a basket or under a bed to shut out the light? Of course not. A lamp is placed on a stand where its light will shine. Everything that is now hidden or secret will eventually be brought to light. Anyone who is willing to hear should listen and understand. And be sure to pay attention to what you hear. The more you do this, the more you will understand, and even more besides. To those who are open to my teaching, more understanding will be given. But to those who are not listening, even what they have will be taken away from them. Jesus also said, Here is another illustration of what the kingdom of God is like. A farmer planted seeds in a field, and then he went on with his other activities. As the days went by, the seeds sprouted and grew without the farmer's help, because the earth produces crops on its own. First a leaf blade pushes through, then the heads of wheat are formed and finally the grain ripens. And as soon as the grain is ready, the farmer comes and harvests it with a sickle. Jesus asked, How can I describe the kingdom of God? What story should I use to illustrate it? It is like a tiny mustard seed. Though this is one of the smallest of seeds, it grows to become one of the largest of plants, with long branches where birds can come and find shelter. He used many such stories and illustrations to teach the people as much as they were able to understand. In fact, in his public teaching, he taught only with parables. But afterward, when he was alone with his disciples, he explained the meaning to them. As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's cross to the other side of the lake. He was already in the boat, so they started out leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. But soon a fierce storm arose. High waves began to break into the boat until it was nearly full of water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. Frantically, they woke him up, shouting, Teacher, don't you even care that we are going to drown? When he woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the water, Quiet down. Suddenly the wind stopped, and there was a great calm. And he asked them, Why are you so afraid? Do you still not have faith in me? And they were filled with awe and said among themselves, Who is this man? that even the wind and waves obey him.